And here's what the dash is saying. Key in ignition. But there's no key. What is going on Mopar fam? So we have a problem, another problem with frostbite. Um, not gonna lie, frostbite has literally killed me the last couple weeks uh, in my pocketbook, that's for sure. So as many of you know, the other day, the Tickum, the fuse box right here, had a meltdown and cost us about a thousand bucks right there. So we made it to Mo Party. We weren't racing. Everything was good. Uh, truck has been fine since we replaced that. However, the other day, I come out here to get in the truck and go take it down the street and go drive it, and it was dead. Um, battery was completely drained down again. So, don't really know what's going on with that, as I haven't had the time to really diagnose that. But the other problem is, so we charge the battery up, and when the battery is connected to the truck, everything's hooked up, it's telling me that the key is in the ignition when it's not. Key is right here in my pocket. Um, no key in the ignition, but the lights on the dash is on and it's saying key in ignition. And they will not go off, the lights will not go off unless we disconnect the battery. So something's going on there and that just happened. So basically, what we've narrowed it down to is it's going to be probably the key switch inside the truck. We're going to have to replace the key switch. That is another $400 part from the dealer. So I'm going to show you what's going on, what it's doing, in case yours does this to you and you can figure it out, hopefully. Um, but apparently it's another common problem with Mopar stuff. The key switch assembly, um, which is basically a, like a wireless unit, reads your key fob and everything, lets you crank the truck or push start whatever they go out and they do different you know different funky things um, you know like mine right now is telling me the keys in the ignition when it's not some people it won't let them start the truck or the car period um, sometimes you you know you have to play with the key to get it to work um, but right now what mine's doing is it's saying the keys in the ignition but it is not so I'm gonna hook the battery up real quick show you what it's doing Alright, so we're going to hook the battery up real quick. Well, before we do that, let me show you inside the truck here what's going on. Alright, so as you see, no key in the ignition. It's right here in my hand. We're going to leave it that way. Absolutely no key in the ignition. We're going to come over here. We're going to hook up the battery real quick. I'll put the positive on. Put the negative on. And I don't know if you guys can hear that, but the door is chiming. The alarm is chiming. And the keys are in my pocket. Usually that don't happen unless the key is in the ignition. And again, here's my key. And here's what the dash is saying. Key in ignition, but there's no key. So I can put the key in, turn it on, turn it off, take the key out. Still says the key is in the ignition. So that's a problem. And if I shut the door, it still is saying inside, although you can't see through my dark windows, that the key's in ignition and the dash is lit up. So obviously that's going to kill my battery. We can't let that happen. So, I'm going to come over here real quick. I'm going to unhook the battery again. So we can make the repair. We're going to try to replace this ignition real quick. I'm going to show you how to do it. It's actually pretty simple. Hopefully this takes care of our problem, but let's see what happens. So to get this ignition out, you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver. 
and down here on the bottom of this panel underneath the steering wheel there's a screw here and a screw over here I already got them loose so I'm just gonna pull those out and then the rest of it just clips in so if you grab this right here that will pop out and the hood release and there's a connector there but we're going to leave that alone so here is your ignition switch there's a wire connector on the back and then you're going to need a torx driver to get out these four screws right here that's all the way around it and that's pretty much it it's just a basically a big box comes out unplugs it plug in a new one put it back together it's pretty straightforward and you're gonna need like I said it's a Torx little star bit screwdriver and that will get it going right there all right so this is the new part for Mopar that I picked up at the local de dealership up here and like I said it's one one unit that's basically all it is that's where the key would go and then you got the electrical connector on the back that plugs in and then four screws that holds it on so that's what we're going to replace we're going to take the screws out of the old one real quick and get it out and then put this one in and see what happens now i hear sometimes you have to get these programmed to your key so that your key fob will work and it recognizes your key most likely that's going to be the case and that's probably what we're going to have to do um, if that's a if that's the case you know unfortunately that kind of sucks because if your vehicle doesn't run then you really don't have a way to get it to the dealership to get it programmed now in my case my truck will still start and run but it when you take the key out it's saying the key is still in the ignition so it's going to kill the battery unless i disconnect the battery so we can leave the old switch in drive to the dealership get them to pro you know and then once we get to the dealership plug in the new one and have them program the key switch to the or key uh excuse me program the key to the new key switch so that's not too much of a hassle now what I have tried, and I'm going to see if it works. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. I disconnected the battery cables. I tied them together for about an hour to do a hard reset. Sometimes when you do that, and that's what I did when I replaced the Tickum, the fuse box assembly, I did that and it actually worked. It reprogrammed the box, everything, and I didn't have to take it to the dealership. So we're going to see if that works. It probably won't for this repair, but we're going to try it see if it works. If not, you do have to get it to the dealership to get your key programmed. So, anywho, let's get the old one out, put the new one in, and let's see what happens. Hi guys, so we got the new key switch in, and we are at the Aikens Dodge dealership over here in Winder, Georgia. And as you can tell, we're gonna have to get the new key switch programmed. The new switch will not uh, hard reset itself by you know unhooking the battery cables. So we're gonna have to have the dealership actually program it with their software, but that's where we're at. All right guys, like I said, we are over here at Aikens Dodge over here in Winder, Georgia. We have Frostbite over here at one of their service bays. And what we are doing now, um, we're about to have the new ignition switch program to my old key fob so that the vehicle will start. Uh, with the new switch in it will not start so it has to be programmed to the key fob now how we did that is we drove the truck over here with the new key switch still in the truck because obviously it would let us still start and drive the truck problem we had with that was if we turned the truck off took the key out it kept saying the key was still in, in the ignition and the lights would stay on and drain the battery so that's what we did we drove over here with the new key switch or excuse me we drove here with the old key switch installed and now that i got it over here at the dealership i just swapped in the new switch for him so that he can plug in and program 
the key fob to the new switch. Uh, so that's what's going to have to happen if you go through this scenario yourself. Now the programming for this situation is going to run you about 140 bucks. So to get a new key fob or get your old key program to a new switch if you need to have it done, it will run you around $140 for the programming. All right, guys, we got Frostbite back up and running. We got the new key switch and key fob program from the dealership over here in Winder, and we are rolling. Currently in Frostbite right now, we're heading back to the house so I can uh, get ready and then go back to work. So finally, I'm happy that we got the truck back up and going. That's been an absolute nightmare. I'm hoping that my battery drain issues is finally over. I'm hoping maybe the key switch was the problem. Maybe it wasn't turning off all the way. Um, it certainly wasn't now, um, but before it wasn't doing that. So maybe that was our drain. And uh, yeah, so hopefully that takes care of that situation. We'll know after a few days. I'll let the truck sit for a few days and uh, we'll check battery voltage and see if it's still holding. But hopefully this video will help you guys out if you run into the same issue with your key switch saying that your key is still in the ignition when you're holding it in your hand. So pretty, pretty simple, very, very simple uh, repair. Very easy to replace the key switch on these trucks. Very, very simple. The headache is the fact that you're gonna have to get your keys programmed to the switch and that sucks because that does cost more money. You're gonna be looking at about $126 was how much I just paid to get mine programmed. And uh, then the time to go to the dealership to do it. So that's the biggest problem with it. Um, other than that, it's not that bad. Just a, just a big headache, really. So definitely not the end of the world. Could be worse. So. I'm just happy that the truck's running and we're good. And uh, yeah, feels good to drive Frostbite down the street. It's been a little while, so hell yeah. She sounds good. Oh yeah. I got the exhaust cutout closed right now. That way you guys can see. 